Every now and again, there's a game changer in the industry, like the Rolex Panda Daytona was to Rolex, or the IWC Engineer was to IWC. Going a step further, it's like the Snoopy was to the Amiga Moonwatch. These watches have people queuing or waiting in waiting lists for literally years just to get a glimpse of that, let's call it unicorn watch. And I think Tudor's Black Bay Chrono in pink is the unicorn watch from Tudor this year. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why this is Tudor's unicorn watch, what this means for Tudor as a brand, and why I think this will rocket the whole watch market. Before we start this video, if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button to help a fellow watch nerd out. Welcome back to the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison, as always. And let's talk about unicorns for a second, a phrase that I'm sure I've heard before, but I'm gonna claim it as my own. It's the Chisholm Hunter phrase, it's the unicorn watch. A unicorn watch is a watch that attracts you into the rest of the collection. The IWC engineer is a perfect example of this. It attracted everybody in the mainstream media to IWC. And after they'd looked at the engineer and explored the engineer, they were passed down through other IWC models. And then they realized how brilliant a brand IWC actually was. I think this Tudor Chrono, the pink Tudor Chrono, the new pink Tudor Chrono, is the unicorn watch for Tudor. But before we go on to what this means for Tudor as a brand, and also what this means for the watch industry as a whole, let's cover some of the specs, because this is a watch review after all, and we did get hands-on with this new model at Watches and Wonders 2024. This new Chrono model has pretty much exactly the same specs as you're used to from the other Chrono models. It comes in at 41 millimeters in diameter and 14.2 millimeters in thickness. It's by no means a, a thin watch. It is quite a chunky monkey and they've actually used the same movement that they used in the last model. It comes in at almost 50 millimeters lug to lug, about 49.8 or 49.9, and it does wear pretty damn nice on the wrist. Now the wrist shot you're actually looking at at the moment is Drew's wrists, and Drew's wrists coming at about six to 6.5 inches. So around about the same size as mine, and it looks pretty good. I do think because it is pink, it's a bigger, bolder color, it does look a little bit chunkier than let's say the black model. The movement in this model is the same movement as the previous versions, as I just said, which is the MT5813. Where this model really stands out, however, apart from obviously the dial being pink and the subdials being in black, is it has that new five link bracelet and it has the Tudor T-Fit clasp with rapid adjustments. This bracelet looks so much better, in my opinion, than the previous three link or oyster, if you want to call it that, on the previous model. It's just stunning. Now the pink dial of this watch on the wrist isn't actually as pink as you might think. <laughs> That rhymes, ADHD is going crazy today. I don't think of Barbie pink, think of kind of more of a muted, more dulled down, a little bit darker aesthetic of a pink dial. It does suit really, really well. At the start, I was hesitant. Um, I thought it might not suit when on the wrist, when combined with a suit and tie, which is what I was wearing at Watching Wonders, but it actually did. And now that we've covered the kind of basic specs, let's talk about what this means for the watch industry and also what this potentially could mean for Tudor. Now, I've got some opinions here that might upset people, but this is just my opinion. Now, it, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that the watch industry has been going through some waves. It's been going through some turmoil over the last year, two years since COVID. The residual values of a lot of brands have dropped, and that's because potentially they're more readily available and potentially because we don't have as much expendable income as we did over COVID because we're all starting to go back on holiday. Like I was in Mexico three weeks ago. I'm not spending my money just on watches now. I've got other things to do. But what I think this specific release has done for Tudor and also probably in turn the rest of the industry is generated a little bit more pop, generated a little bit more hype and also generated a lot more eyes within or on the Tudor brand. Now this watch is going to be extremely limited. There's going to be tiny numbers, tiny quantities of this watch. And just speaking from a brand perspective, what any brand hates, what they hate more than anything is flippers. And I don't agree with flippers either. So I can get on board with that. Now, how can they vet their customers to make sure that they're not flippers? Well, what they do is they build a brand profile and they build trust equity with that customer. 
And in order to build trust equity, you need to have a shopping uh, resume. You have to have shop with that retailer or Tudor as a retailer before so that they know you're not just going to flip the watch. So what this watch will create at its pinnacle, if you imagine this watch at the peak, it will build more brand loyalty for Tudor as a brand because people will buy into potentially other models, the white chrono, the black chrono, maybe they get a Black Bay 58 in order to have the portfolio to get this pink Tudor. And what this will do in turn is increase the pre-owned and residual values of the pink Tudor and the other models. And just to add to that absolute rant that I've just gone on, one of the reasons why watches go up in value on the pre-owned market is because not that many people actually sell them. And the reason that not that many people actually sell them is because they have a relationship, they have trust equity with the brand. So when they come up, they're a lot more rare, they're a lot more desirable, and a lot more people, a lot more people want them. And I think that this is what Tudor this pink Tudor chrono is going to be. It will be the unicorn watch for Tudor. And I think that could potentially spill out to other sides of the industry, other brands within the industry. <sighs> rant over. Listen, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts on the matter. I've ranted for uh, far too long and it's because I'm on the water now and not the coffee. I've had to reel back on the coffee. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please hit that subscribe button or follow our Instagram at Chisholm Hunter Watches. Remember, we do have our own podcast, which is the Into the Mind podcast. And I'll see you guys real soon.